Good evening, everybody. It's 631. So Tonight's meeting of the Summers Worth uh, Planning Board will come to order. Anna, could you please call the roll? Paul Rabitis. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. David Witham. Here. Robert Belmore. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Paul Goodwin. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. Thank you, Anna. And uh, as Ron Lujulia is out tonight, uh, Paul Goodwin, pleased to appoint you as a full voting member for this evening. Your last as an appointed member of the board. Uh, first order of business is the approval of the meeting minutes from the November 15th, 2023 minutes. Mr. Chair, move to accept as presented. I have a motion to ac accept from Paul. Uh, seconded by Mr. Barry. All those in favor? Any opposed or abstentions? Mr. Chairman, I'll abstain for not being here last time. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, moving forward to committee reports. Land use boards are in the packet uh, from the city council. Yes, thank you. Uh, two items just to briefly report out on tonight. Uh, the traffic signalization uh, upgrade on the High Street corridor is nearing completion. At last check with the Public Works Director a couple of weeks ago, it was at about 85% completion. I would suggest it's, it's closer to the 100% completion point at this point in time. Uh, still have to do the walkthrough with the engineer punch list and all of that. Uh, but if you've driven that corridor, we would suggest that uh, traffic flows have improved at least a bit uh, because of that. Uh, there'll be more uh, analysis and programming to be done to really fine tune that. Uh, the work on the handicap tip downs for pedestrian access at all of the intersections has taken place. Uh, so we're, we're nearing the end of what has been a long road with that project. Uh, the other item uh, to report out on, uh, at the last meeting, the council voted down the amendment to the uh, zoning ordinance chapter 13 regarding the historic overlay district uh, the council had considered uh, a reduction in size of the historic district um, in three different uh, sort of areas of the HD of the historic district uh, that was voted down but I can suggest that there was a lot of conversation around the fact that there is a need to improve that process and I, I can't specifically articulate what those improvements would be, but I think there was a general consensus among council that uh, the current system needs some fine tuning. Um, uh, so uh, the uh, incoming mayor, uh, Mayor-elect Girding, uh, has uh, promised to appoint a special commission, I think it would be, uh, to dive deeper into the historic district uh, rules uh, and uh, regulations and their uh, tools that they use for evaluating the criteria. Uh, and that would probably be a joint workshop between the Historic District Commission and the City Council, maybe some uh, community involvement as, as well. So uh, although the uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance did not pass, uh, it certainly generated a lot of conversation and some pretty significant momentum moving forward to uh, work on that. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item, uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's actually, things are picking up. <laughs> and we're, we're doing things a little bit differently now. But um, first of all, we're, we're just about to start uh, looking at the next 10-year plan and doing the evaluations of the various projects from the different communities for grading them and, and uh, giving them our our order for our individual order for what we think uh, deserves the most credit first and on down in that list. So that'll be coming up and you'll hear more about it as we progress through that. Um, in the last couple of months, we've done a couple of field trips on the economic development side. And um, the first one was to um, the PEMS at, uh, what, did, what did, the GEMS at Pencil. Uh, sneaker plant over on Route 108, and what a what a facility that is! Uh, new facility here, and relatively new facility here in Summersworth, uh, where the old Sumner Printing building used to be, and um, the um, the people who work there have a vision, and the people who who own the company have a vision of being a major competitor uh, in the world of high-end sneakers. And uh, they have a plan for pulling that off. So that's gonna be something to look for down the road. 
Uh, their, their sneakers are already out there in, in a variety of stores. Uh, so take a look for them. They are expensive. They're in the $100 range or better. They're high-end sneakers, and they're, they're, they're out there to compete. So the, it, it's nice to see the shoe industry come back to this part of the, New Hampshire as well. So we, we, we all wish them well. Um, and last week we did a, a tour of, of Durham and the University of New Hampshire, and the subject was about the cooperation between the university and the town and how cooperating together they can plan together and hopefully grow the university and grow the town uh, at the same time. So the gist of the whole tour was about that cooperation between town and the university. So people are, a lot of people are talking about more, you know, whether it ever comes to fruition, but in different parts of the county, a lot of people are talking about um, joint projects. And uh, so, you know, maybe those things can learn from uh, how one community does it. So Thank we'll be you. having more of those field trips as time goes on too. Thank you. Good to hear. Uh, eyes on 30. Any news? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, we did have a meeting on December 6. Um, one of the major topics that we've been covering has been beautification. So uh, Councillor Cameron invited one of her friends, uh, who is also the founder of the Don't Trash Dover program. Um, it was meant to be an informational meeting where we wanted to understand how she came to creating that program. It's basically a clean streets program. That's what it is. Um, in short, basically once a month, they gather up for an hour, collect whatever they can collect from a certain spot, and they do it again the next month. So this would be in addition to any other programs that we would do here in the city. So uh, this is something that we are talking about. Uh, it's not official, but uh, Deb was very nice to give us all the advice of the tools and uh, the methods and communication and all the things that would go into putting that action into place. So that's something that we'll continue to talk about. And if that ever goes into play, we'll let you guys know. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one new entry for tonight, uh, Community Power Coalition. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Summers with Power Coalition met late November, uh, just prior to Thanksgiving. And uh, at that time, we held a public hearing, um, uh, received no comments from the public. And uh, after discussion, the committee forwarded the Summersworth Power Aggregation Plan to the City Council for review and action. And at the last City Council meeting, um, they also held a public hearing, held an in-depth presentation from representatives from the uh, New Hampshire Power Coalition, and um, very informative. And at that time, uh, City Council approved the aggregation plan for the City Manager to submit to the Power Utilities Commission of New Hampshire. So. I think uh, about twice a year they vote on new community members, so we should look to around June time on hearing back from the Utilities Commissions on the acceptance of our application. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just one other detail that, that goes along with that. Uh, uh, Representative Horton is correct that we're, we're sort of eyeballing maybe a June time frame to join the uh, Community Power Coalition. Uh, Joining is uh, dependent on whether or not their rates would be lower than the current uh, power rate that Eversource provides. Interesting that a recent announcement, sort of after we had our public hearing and voted on it, that Eversource announced a rather significant drop in their rates. It's good news. It's competition. Uh, you know, w if the community power rates are lower than that, then boy, are we winners, right? So uh, one can only hope. So it's an important detail of that. So, uh, any old business to come before the board? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, moving on then to new business. Uh, first item on the bill for this, Hawkins Family Revocable Trust is seeking a minor site plan and conditional use permit approval for commercial and residential use at a property located at 5 Main Street in the business district, map 11, lot 210, site 20-23, CUP 05-2023. I'd like to invite the applicant to, or the representative to speak. Oh. I'll defer to oh, Ms. Mears first. Thank you. Uh, applicant is proposing to reuse the existing building to have two commercial units on the first floor 
two one bedroom ADA apartments on the first floor and four two bedroom apartments on the second level. A conditional use permit is being sought to allow the two residential units at the street level, the first floor, within the existing building. Uh, the property is located within the business district in the form based code overlay area three and special parking overlay district. Uh, the applicant is asking for four waivers, uh, one from the traffic study, drainage study, school availability, and landscaping design standards. Uh, this application is complete and ready for a review. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, FX Bruton from Bruton and Barabee. I represent uh, the Hawkins Trust. Uh, Matt Hawkins is here with me tonight, and uh, Kevin McEnany is here as well from Civil Works Engineering. So, do you have any questions of them? Um, this is uh, an exciting project for my client because he is looking forward to making an investment in Summersworth and, and being in Summersworth with other projects and working with you in the future. And this is a f good, I think, a good first step. This is the revitalization of the old police station, which presumably everyone knows would uh, be well welcomed within the city at this point. Um, it's a property that has a sidewalk already, which is good. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> but in any event, it's, it's, it is an exciting uh, project. Um, it's a funny uh, procedural kind of project in a sense because when we started, and I think when the city agreed to sell the property, we thought it was gonna be a fairly uh, straightforward review, um, but um, because um, we need a CUP, uh, because we're in this form-based area, uh, which doesn't allow for uh, a, a residential use on the first floor, um, we need that CUP and I'll ask for it, um, only because we need the CUP, then we now need site plan approval. We wouldn't need that if we didn't need the CUP. So we're asking for that as well, um, again, because it's been triggered by us having to have a CUP. So in any event, um, fairly straightforward project, but that's kind of in the underlying background, so we need a vote on both of those things. And as Michelle mentioned, we have four requested waivers. Uh, I won't, <coughs> those need a vote as well, obviously. I won't really go through a lot of those waiver requests because um, I'll start by saying that this project will not involve the changing of any of the building facade or any footprint. Um, so this is all internal, which is good, and it really kind of diminishes, I think, and why we usually wouldn't need site plan approval because we're really not doing anything on the outside, it's all internal. Uh, Mr. Hawkins would like to provide for two ADU, ADA units, not ADU, um, on the first floor. They would be one bedroom units. And uh, the city has uh, two existing handicapped spots right in front of those two units. And we've had discussions, we went through the SRTC, and we've talked to uh, Mr. Bobinski about the possible leasing of those spaces and um, um, he's uh, Mr. Bubinski was agreeable to that so we earlier presented that we would have the two spaces on the property but we think we would like to um, keep those spaces and, and accept that offer if it works out uh, maybe maybe it won't work <laughs> out. I don't know but the the zone does not require um, any parking um, and um, if it didn't work out, uh, we would be happy to put them on site, and and we can agree to that. If 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 it doesn't work out with the city, that we would put those on site. I think I'm saying it accurately. Um, so I don't think that's going to be really an issue. Um, more logistics of whether we can do that or not, but we could easily accommodate that. One thing that um, Mr. Hawkins understands owns uh, quite a few units in the Stratford County, that when you have an ADU, ADA unit, you really don't have a, even a parking need because most of those tenants, if not every single one of them, rely on assisted transportation services. So, uh, but nonetheless, we'd be happy to have them there and uh, we'd, we don't you know, have any objection to that. The balance of the building would be uh, four two-bedroom units in the upper portion of the building. 
and the, the lower portion of the building would have uh, two commercial components. One would be intended to be what um, the picture says a restaurant, but it's really an eatery. Uh, Mr. Hawkins doesn't really want to compete with the restaurants across the street. It's more of a, a grab and go kind of place. Might have one or two tables, but it's not a restaurant, it's not sit down, it's not that. The other use is interesting. It's an indoor play area, intended to be an indoor play area for children. Um, and you, if you know the property, you know there's what looks like a, a park uh, and it's actually a, a, a park area that is on this property. Um, and what we've said in our materials, and I'll say now, is that there is no intention to um, not have the public continue to enjoy that park area. There may be a small patio added for uh, the toddlers and or someone who grabbed a sandwich, but I don't, that wouldn't really be of any consequence and really wouldn't affect the park area in terms of public access. So I think that's that'll fit into the, the CUP requests. So I think that's generally the project. Um, I'll just go through the CUP requirement uh, just so that we I can we can say I did it. And then if you have any questions, obviously we're that's why we're here. Um, so the first is uh, both public and private building and landscaping contribute to the aesthetic value and the right of way and providing civic spaces. Um, one of the things we're gonna do, you know, you may know that the, there's currently there's window frames from an older building, but those are all blocked up with concrete and those will be revitalized with windows and the whole facade will be um, um, renewed. So uh, with the uh, uh, park area included in terms of still continuing to be available for the public and not being you know, roped off, if you will, we think that we meet that first test. Uh, B is the develop uh, adequately, the development adequately accommodates automobiles while respecting the pedestrian spatial form of public areas. Um, I made a reference that we had about 10 spaces. I think we uh, probably have about six spaces, but again, I, I know this zone actually doesn't have a requirement for parking. Um, and again, if we utilize the spaces in the front, that would be another two. But again, we feel that we can accommodate those on on the property without uh, any impact. And there's a lot of parking space, obviously, on the street and around the area. C is the design of streets and buildings reinforces a safe environment, but not at the expense of accessibility. I indicated that's not really applicable here because we're really not doing anything. Again, it's internal changes only. But I will say we're creating ADA units, which is, I think, relates to providing more accessibility, particularly to living spaces. Uh, D is the architecture and landscape designs are inspired by local climate, topography, history, and building practices. We will have doors, so we'll respect the local climate. I'm not sure if that addresses that issue, but basically, again, um, the architecture and the upgrades with the, the facade, uh, we believe would be consistent with the surrounding properties and would com complement that area. And finally, civic spaces and public gathering places are provided as locations that reinforce community identity and activity, and we think, um, that allowing the park to continue to be used by the public certainly hits that right on its head. And again, providing ADA one bedroom apartments, we believe um, really is, um, uh, promotes uh, excellent uh, living spaces in the area and is consistent with the master plan that um, uh, emphasizes creating livable, walkable, vibrant focal points. And we think that um, this project captures all of that, particularly with the uses that Mr. Hawkins intends for the commercial spaces and offering that ADA um, opportunity for people to live in the downtown area. So um, the I think I'll just say as to the waivers, the scope of the project and the fact that we're not changing anything at all except internal would speak to our reasoning behind those waiver requests for, for this project. And again, we're kind of here on uh, only because we want to provide the ADA units on the bottom, um, and that triggers all the rest of the reviews. So 
I'm happy to answer any questions and um, we appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Uh, Director Mears, any correspondence? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the public hearing now for this for any comments from the audience. Okay. Seeing none, we'll close that and then open it up for anything from the board. I believe we actually jumped over the application acceptance motion earlier. I'll make a motion to uh, move that the site plan and conditional use permit application for Hawkins Family Revocable Trust be accepted as complete for review. Second. Okay. So, motion by Manager Belmore, second from Mr. Robitis. Any discussion? All those in favor? I think there was a discussion. Oh, just, okay. sorry. Thank you. Yeah, question. Um, on the ADA to uh, understand these four units that are going in, uh, is there a specific ADA uh, handicap or? Point of order, um, this is just on the acceptance yes, of the application. They, they have to accept us as complete, then we can get into talking about, yeah. and I, okay. I'm happy okay. to talk about that. All right, we'll right. that. Okay, thank you. That's right, done. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of the application acceptance? Any opposed? All right, thank you. And, I, and I'm happy to jump into the answer to that. Yep, uh, jumping into discussion from the board and go there. Thank you. So the um, this there will be an architect that will be utilized for the entire project, and Question. the architect will be or qualified comment. to make every improvement that an ADA apartment needs to have in order to qualify as that. So it will be advertised as ADA compliant. And when we do that, we then have to assure ourselves that through the use of the architect that we have made that as uh, we have followed all the regulations that is associated with that. And that's what the architect would do. And there's two units, two one bedrooms, not four. <coughs> yeah, I was just wondering if there was a particular, uh, again, like I said, if there was a particular requirement on the individual's handicap rating in order to qualify for that space there is and that's what the architect understands that, and they, they they do that for us thank you i don't know it but they do uh, mr Belmore? not much i do yeah i just want just want to comment on um the idea of leasing parking spots spaces that would be that would have to be um, approved by the city council. Right. Mr. Bobinski is doesn't have the authority. I I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. And, and if it didn't work again, like I said, we would just put them on site. Uh, Mr. Goodwin. So just to make sure I understand, the, what is triggering the site plan review is the fact that zoning requires ground floor commercial and because there's residential on the ground floor that's triggering the site plan this whole process otherwise Correct. this would be purely administrative this is a question for the planning director so it, it's the waiver request is actually what triggers uh, planning board review I can't administer I can't waive site plan regulations so that's why they're they're here Sir, can you say that again sorry I didn't follow so because there's four waiver requests okay. that's what's triggering uh, review, review by tonight. the planning board and also the fir the first floor the two units the conditional use permit okay so the fact that there are units on the ground floor and they're asking for waivers means this process is required by the planning board yes thank you so uh, when you say you're not um, modifying next year I get what you're saying you're not adding volume not adding additions you're not putting new cladding on. However, you are uh, reopening up the uh, storefront on the ground level, which is great. Um, I guess I'm a little concerned that I don't have anything to look at to show me how you're achieving that. It just says sort of windows, and I can imagine any number of configurations in which uh, new windows could be added to those sections, which would be. Um, did you see this? Did not see that. Yes. I'm, I'm just asking if you did. I did not. Oh, no. Can I just show it to you? Yes, please. All right. I th this was part of our application, so I can see, hand it around. Yeah. Okay, great. And so looking at this, we've got, uh, I'll, I'll pass this on the board yeah. here, but just while I have it in front of me. So we have um, commercial in the main building, and then what used to be, a, I think, the, the chapel, a church before it was the police station, is the AD, where the ADA Correct. units are. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, great, that is helpful. Um, I, and I would just note, and are, are these 
going to be low income or like tax credit or any sort of other subsidized housing? No. Okay. So I would just note that in my experience, just because you build ADA units does not mean they'll be occupied by ADA people that need ADA units. It is great to have that as part of the inventory. Um, certainly the owner is, uh, could specifically seek out that tenant, but just a, well, that's a general that's, a general comment. No, I understand. If that's our intent is to have those utilized. Right. By well, that's that's a, a wonderful them. service. Um, is there was there in that packet was there anything site you're like you're waiving landscape completely because it also says you are anticipating to put in some additional plantings, but right. you're also asking for a waiver on yeah. And I um, I don't know if the board has my my photos because we submitted photos I do have the photos and I'm familiar with okay. the site okay yeah but I think in our our review I think it said that you was anticipated let's see if I can find that quote here it's anticipated that they would be uh, recently removed some dying trees uh, indicated there would be additional plannings to the site applicant is sinking planning board approval existing vegetation meets the intended regulation so I guess I'm just concerned, understanding that a project, even though this is small, you're going to have contractors coming in and out. Right. Um, I think I'm mostly okay with using the existing vegetation that there is there. Uh, it obviously needs to be maintained. Right. Um, and through construction, if anything is damaged, it yeah. needs to be at minimum replaced. Right. I mean, nothing in this plan, and I, I, I agree with everything you said, so I don't, it's not a problem. but. None of the construction, I mean, there. I don't know that they would really take the park as a true laydown area because they have the the, the parking a lot area, behind, if yeah. you will, more as a laydown area. So I don't think there's any <coughs> intent at all. They, they can't hear you. Okay. Yeah, a, anything would be more in that parking <coughs> area. And, and, yeah, obviously, if there was any disturbance to the existing vegetation, w we'd replace it because we want it there. And the... Um, you know, there, it's an interesting site because it kind of wraps around all different ways. And the, the tree actually that looks like it could be part of the gas station is actually on this property. So there's a lot of existing vegetation there. And, and one of my pictures was to show you that band uh, within the park area, you know, that has that. Sure. So we think it's pretty robust. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Whitman, then Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Um, I had the same comment about the, the, the parking spaces. Uh, my, my, again, that would have to be a request before the city council and routed through maybe a, a couple of different committees there. My knee jerk reaction is uh, I, I think you ought to be uh, planning to put them on your site. Um, we have limited uh, handicapped parking spaces uh, in the downtown area. Um, although I generally favor the idea of leasing spaces, we've done that with other projects. It makes sense. Uh, it's more difficult when we're looking at uh, defined ADA spaces, uh, which we don't have many of. And if we had to relocate them, mm -hmm. then we're looking at modifying curb cuts and you know van access, and it, it just triggers a lot of. It's a snowball, so yeah, it's more complicated. It, there. it was a just a general conversation. That's why I said if if we happened, great, and if it doesn't, that's fine too. It's right. all set. Perfect. Uh, beyond that, uh, I I wholeheartedly support uh, what's being uh, endeavored here. Um, we're going to take a, a, a building and kind of restore it to maybe closer to what it once was. Uh, I, I guess I didn't know there was a chapel there at one time. I knew there was a court on that end. Uh, I think maybe in both instances people pray when they go to those places, but uh, for different reasons perhaps. <laughs> but um, uh, So I think, again, we're returning the building to, to what it once was. And if you think about buildings in the, 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 the downtown urban core, very seldom do you find one uh, that has uh, such a notable green space uh, attached to it, right? And, and yes, that was once a city park because it was connected to the police station and all of that. But uh, the purchase grabbed that as well. And uh, that is sort of a, a, a gem in the downtown, right? There are many buildings that uh, would struggle to do anything with landscaping. So uh, I, I appreciate the applicant wanting to keep that, maintain it, certainly an important little pocket of green uh, in, in an otherwise hard scaped downtown. Yeah. 
I think the other thing that's unique about this parcel, uh, there are very few properties in the downtown that have any on-site parking. Right. Uh, again, not an abundance of it here, maybe six to 10 spaces, depending how you configure it, right. uh, but you're better off than most. And although I'll never play for the Red Sox and never did, I could throw a baseball uh, <laughs> to an abundance of parking uh, that is free all day parking currently. So um, uh, I, I, th I think those issues are, 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 are not c a concern to me. Um, you know, I think the idea of uh, a mixed use property is what is uh, sort of sought after uh, via the regulations with, you know, kind of <coughs> commercial uh, business on the first floor, residential on the second floor. Uh, but uh, I think in many instances, I think we have to be open to the idea of residential on the first floor. Uh, there's a market for that. There's a need for that. We recently rezoned a good stretch of Main Street to allow for that. Uh, this is not far from that, so it seems to, to fit. Uh, and if I think about ADA units, uh, unless we were to add an elevator, which would make this project uh, rather expensive for the, the, the size it is, you got to have them on the first floor. And there is a need for ADA units uh, in, the, in the region. The Somersworth Housing Authority, some of you know better than I, recently did a lot of renovations of their units, and n a number of them are ADA compliant now to meet that demand that exists in the population. And I would agree with Attorney Bruton that uh, many of the folks that would utilize these units probably don't drive cars, right? It would be the exception to the rule uh, that they would. Um, so I support the, the, the condi conditional use permit. I also support the waivers. You know, I'll, I'll pick on one in particular because it's one that sometimes generates conversation, uh, and that's around uh, the study of impact on the schools. Uh, uh, not everybody may share in my opinion, but I welcome a lot more kids in our school system. Uh, we have a small enrollment now compared to what we once used to. That limits class opportunity. It limits the number of potential participants for athletics and band, uh, and it generally lessens the educational opportunity for the existing kids. So mm -hmm. having more kids in our school system, I think, is a good thing at this point in time. And I draw your attention to the Sunningdale development. I use it as my poster child for this all of the time. Uh, there are 89 homes in the Sunningdale development, and last time I checked, they generated two kids in our school system. So uh, oh. it is not a thing in the current environment. So uh, I just use that to wave my flag on that. Mm -hmm. So again, so in support of all the waivers, in support of the CUP, in support of the project in general. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Richardson, Ms. Yeah, I was, I was going to uh, jump on the same issue of schools that Mr. Witham did. And um, again, I have no problem with it uh, being waived. Uh, we do need as many kids as we can get in our schools right now, and that, so that's not a problem. I do have a, I have a question, though. Um, regardless of whether or not the folks living in the ADA units will or will not be having vehicles, people in the other units could very well need handicapped parking for one reason or another. We certainly have plenty of handicapped people who are driving, thus the need for handicapped parking. And part of my concern is, um, and, and, and granted it might only be a couple of times a year when Main Street is shut down for the Children's Festival or the pump, Pumpkin Festival or some activity like that, that people still have access to those parking spaces that are out front. And I, I know they can come in, you know, via Station Street and turn the corner and get there. However, during those times, there are often people walking in the street there, going up to the businesses and that kind of thing, sort of to extend those. Uh, same thing if we have, uh, you know, in the past we've had the food trucks and there's a lot of people downtown and a lot of, though that area is not blocked off, there's still a lot of people walking in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be able to make sure that people that do need handicapped parking have access to those, to those parking spaces without it worrying about pedestrian traffic, if, if, if I may put it that way. So that's a concern yeah. that I have. And again, it's very just a couple times a year maybe, but yeah. I think it's still an issue for me. Yeah, the, those are, um, those activities are allowed by the city and those are the city spaces. So if they want to restrict those mm -hmm. activities from there, I mean, I don't think that would be helpful to the Children's Festival, but I, 
guess the city could do it. But we're, we have six units when we're providing two on, on mm -hmm. space. The ratio there is pretty pretty high for any project. So we're doing the best we can. I understand what you're saying, but I mean, we can't plan. I don't know what the answer could be to that other than the city shouldn't allow that space to be utilized by those events. But mm -hmm. that's I think that's unreasonable too, to be honest, because I think there's so much parking literally in that parking field across the street that handicap people who um, if they're per, if they're uh, currently restricted from those spaces w there's nothing this development's going to do that create more of a problem those uh, spaces if those events occur on the one or two days during the year either restrict them or they don't I don't remember I've been to them but I just can't remember how those two spaces are dealt with but there's not much we could do about it but but again, I, we're, we're providing, I guess, <laughs> looks like we're providing spaces on site, which is pretty good, I yeah. think. I just wanted to bring it up. It's, it's something that I noticed, and I, like I said, it's only a couple times a yeah. year, but it, it, for anybody who does need or requires a handicapped parking for place, it's important to them. No, I agree, and my, I mean, my in-laws who live in town utilize those spaces, so it's important to me, too. I just... I know those events because I've been here for 30 years and I don't think anyone's complained right now and those events have occurred on those spaces so I think it's okay. I think that parking field is plenty for what handicap need during that period of time. Mr. Abitis, Mr. Belmore and Doc. Um, I don't typically jump on a bandwagon and just Mike, I've, I've, I've looked at that building 10,000 times, and I've often thought how nice it would be to see that building sort of brought back to what it probably used to look like. Mm -hmm. So I am in fully support of this project. Um, I'm really anxious to see the cleanup of that. I'm in support of the CUP and the waivers. And the uh, last thing that I'd like to mention is that, um, Mr. Bruton, you, me you mentioned that it wasn't going to be a full-fledged restaurant on that side because you're thinking not to compete with the restaurants across the street. I look at that as another successful restaurant, full-service restaurant downtown. It is only a good thing. The more of those places that are downtown and they're all feeding off each other, no pun intended, um, yep. I think is a solid thing. So I personally would love to see a full-service, another full-service, yeah, you think know, a successful full-service restaurant in our downtown. We're limited a little bit by the size of that space, but we're, I mean, they're looking to be profitable, so <laughs> I'm sure that all of the things you just said will, will unfold for sure. On that, that's all I have, but I think it's a good project and fully support of the waivers in the CUP as well. Mr. Romer? No. I'll say. Ready to make motion. Can I just, again, even though I said it, I just want to say it again because there's some uh, aspect to this that's the public park, or I'll say public park in quotes because it's owned by my client, but... Um, I did say, and I'll, I'll just reemphasize it just for the record, that there's likely to be a very fairly small patio that he might add for the use of the uh, people who visit the site uh, on the commercial end or, and or the residential, but it would not be uh, at all intrusive to the overall effect of this as a public park, which is what he wants to maintain. And he likes that aspect too as well. Yeah, just the, to that end, Mr. Chairman, um, it's, it's not currently part of what we're reviewing, so I'm assuming that's de minimis enough that it could be handled uh, through staff, through some sort of administrative process. Yeah, it should be able to be done administratively. Thank you. Thank you. Outdoor, outdoor dining application, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, quickly before we go to uh, motions, just a couple comments that I wanted to make on this. Um, first off, I'm, I was encouraged to see the ADA spaces mentioned in this application when it w came in. Uh, something that I think more developers should be looking at as the demographically largest part of the baby boom generation starts getting to the age where disabilities become more common. Um, having units like this in a downtown space I think allows folks more of an opportunity to age in place without being sequestered from society um, and it's something that should be greatly encouraged. I'm also very happy to hear uh, the developers intent to maintain a public space in that green area next to their uh, building as part of their property. Um, that kind of a contribution by business owners to a thriving community is something that we should welcome and encourage. 
and very glad to hear it here. Any other comments from the board? I'll start the motions off. Um, I move that the site plan and conditional use permit application for the Hawkins Family Revocable Trust does not have potential for regional impact. From Mr. Wilma. Second. Seconded uh, by, sorry, I always forget your last name. Mr. Horton, thank you. That was just gross to me. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Waiver requests. I move that the request of the Hawkins Family Revocable Trust for a waiver from Section 10.1.2, requirement to provide a traffic study, that they uh, be approved. Second. Motion by Mr. Bomore, second by Mr. Robitis. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, moving on next to. The I, I moved that the request of the Hawkins Family Revocable Trust. For waiver from section 10.1.3, requirement to provide drainage study be approved. Motion by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second. Uh, seconded by Mr. Horton, I think was in first. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Belmore. I move that the request of the Hawkins Family Revocable Trust for waiver from section 12.11, requirement to provide information on school availability be approved. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Rodatis. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, um, sorry, is that a vote? Or no, that's a vote. Oh, okay. Thank you. All those in favor of the vote? Any opposed? Okay. And okay I can go four for four if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I moved at the request of the Hawkins Family Vocal Trust for determination that the existing landscape meets the intent of the landscape design standards be approved. Uh, motion made by Mr. Melbourne. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Wenham. Any Should discussion? Should we go 4 for 4 batting and baseball? But yeah, <laughs> I can do that. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Right, Mr. Melbourne. I, I move that the request of the Hawkins Family Revocable Trust for Condition Use Permit to allow two residential units at street level be approved. Oh, I'm sorry. I, we just did that, didn't we? We just did. I double counted schools. I'm sorry. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Wilmore, seconded by Mr. Robitas. Any discussion on the CEP? All right. All those in favor? CMS as well. Thank you. All right. Uh, Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Plan revisions, please show the location of the dumpster on the plan. This will need to be screened from the public view as per Chapter 11A, dumpsters. Please show on-site parking. Please note the locations of existing landscaping on the plan. The landscaping will be required to be kept in good condition. Any dead or dying vegetation will need to be replaced. Please show utility connections upon submission of the as-built records. Include a note on the plan that indicates the development complies with the current ADA standards. Please note on the plan that all commercial loading, unloading for delivery shall not use the main street parking. State street or the private parking area shall be utilized to limit the infringement of traffic flow and parking. Please list all waivers uh, granted on the plan. Uh, conditions that must be met uh, to prior to final approval. The plan shall bear the stamp and signature of a licensed land ser surveyor. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Uh, construction cost estimates for the project shall be submitted to the department, a performance surety in no less than 25% of the cost of site construction. Uh, building plans shall bear the stamp of a certified fire protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection systems, fire alarm, monitoring, and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, or any other fire protection or related life safety systems by national and or New Hampshire code. A pre-construction meeting is required. The applicant shall apply for a water and sewer connection permit. Per section 19.23.E.9, the building shall display the designated address number in such a manner as to be uh, visible from the street, which abuts the main entrance to the property. It shall be a minimum of 3.5 inches in height and must be reflective. All lighting must be downlit and shielded. And this does require as-built plans. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. 
under site plan application item F where it talks about commercial loading and unloading I'm trying to read this and near as I can tell the only way they'd be able to get a delivery is with a helicopter I'm, I'm, I'm not following wh what this is intending to say a little clarity there would be helpful yes yeah, so that's a site plan regular regulation uh, to, ha to have the uh, loading for trucks and vehicles on a side street not on a main street okay so we don't want them on main street we don't want them on station street I, we've run out of streets I, I guess that's Maybe it's the way it's worded. I'm not following it. It's station no, it's, it does say Station Street station. or private par parking shall be utilized. Yeah, Station Street's allowed, I believe. Got it. I'm good now. Okay, sorry. sorry. It's <laughs> late. I'm not enough coffee. Oh, so to combination <laughs> error. <laughs> Mr. Rebus? If you're ready for a motion. Absolutely. I move that the request of Hawkins Family Revocable Trust for a minor site plan approval for commercial and six residential unit multifamily use at property property located at five Main Street be approved with the conditions uh, stated by Director Mears. Okay, motion for Mr. Second. Adams. Seconded by Mr. Belmore. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Next up for us tonight, new business item 4B, 85 Elm Street, Summersworth, LLC. We're seeking a site plan amendment to add residential units on a property located at 85 Elm and 20 Green Street in the business with historic and form-based codes overlay, overlay BHFBC district. Assessors map 10, lots 176 and 177, site 20-2022. Yes, so you all should have received the staff memo. The applicant is seeking a site plan amendment to remove the underground uh, parking garage and replace with 24 residential units for a total of 150 units within the new four-story building and a total of 150 units on site. With the proposed revisions, there have been changes to the exterior of the building. This has been approved uh, by the Historic Co District Commission at the October meeting. Uh, this application was reviewed by the SRTC. Um, the application is complete, and you should have also received the traffic memo that was updated. Uh, Horsley Witten is still uh, reviewing, but there was very minor changes to the drainage. Uh, do you have a motion or do you recommend accepting? I yes, recommend accepting as complete. And do you have a motion to accept as complete? So moved. The motion made by Mr. Robitis. Any second? Okay. Second by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? All those in favor of acceptance? Any opposed? All right. We'll go then to the applicant. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, Neil Hansen with Tyne Bond. Uh, we're the civil engineers for the project. Uh, also here is uh, Ben Stebbins and Rob Previty, the uh, owner applicants, and our project architect, uh, Adam Earl, is also here uh, to go over some of the changes to the building. Uh, so as, uh, it was read into the record. We, we were here uh, back in March for site plan approval. Um, and since that time, the building has been redesigned uh, to add additional units where the underground parking was uh, previously located. Um, the current count of residential units is 152. I believe 150 was, was right into the record. And then with the six remaining in the existing building, that would bring the total to 158 on site. Uh, the original approval did also, uh, one of the waivers we had originally received was for a reduction in parking uh, with the condition that we uh, achieve a 1.3 space per unit ratio. Uh, the applicant is, is still committed to achieving that ratio. Um, there would just be a, a, an increase in, in off-site parking spaces. Um, I believe they'll be able to speak to that in a little bit more detail um, <coughs> as, we, as we go through the presentation. Uh, the plans that were submitted, uh, we had addressed the original conditions of approval in that plan set. They were A through J, uh, and we had listed those in the cover letter um, that we had submitted along with the project materials. Uh, and then additionally, when we met with SRTC on December 7th, we received uh, about 25 or so other uh, comments, and we had revised the plans uh, in the week post that meeting uh, to address those comments as well. 
And then, as was also mentioned, we received the uh, additional peer review from the, the traffic engineer. Uh, they had one comment related to uh, replacing the bike storage area that was in the garage, um, and we had actually received that same comment from SRTC. So we were able to uh, call that out on the, on the uh, resubmitted plans uh, dated December 13th. Uh, I'll just quickly go through some of the changes to the site plan related to these uh, to the additional units. Uh, we had to make some minor modifications to the uh, the, the Church Street driveway, uh, no longer having the driveway uh, entering the building underneath it. We were able to to smooth the grading out on that road a little bit. Um, it's it's still a steep road just given the existing condition, but we were able to make it slightly better without needing a, a driveway halfway down it. Uh, and then additionally, the parking lot on the south side of the building, uh, we were able to uh, make an agreement with the, uh, the abutter there to uh, get about, I think it was six additional spaces we were able to fit there by realigning it. Um, that is what triggered the revisions to the drainage report um, that was mentioned earlier. Uh, we did have to add two additional rows to that subsurface infiltration system to account for the additional uh, paved area in that location. Um, there was also a uh, revision to the landscaping plan related to that where uh, we were taking up more um, green space than was previously proposed, uh, which eliminated the, the area that we had a, a few trees previously located. Uh, one of the comments we got from SRTC was, was related to, to maintaining shade trees on the site. Uh, we did go take a look at the site and there is a, a tree that was slated to remain that is very dead. Um, so we are now calling that tree out to be removed and replacing it with a new tree um, in a similar location. Um, and then there was one additional tree that, that we uh, converted to a few shrubs that was a stipulation of the original approval. Uh, there were no changes to the utilities other than a couple minor comments we received from SRTC uh, earlier this month. Um, and that's, those were the, the, the main changes to the site plan and I'll uh, pass it over to Adam to go over some of the changes to the building, um, and then I'll be happy to answer any other questions you'll, you have about the plans, drainage, um, anything of that sort uh, when we get there. Thank you. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, board. Um, as Neil had alluded to, um, we had gone through the HDC in October receiving approval um, for the infill of the lower level Elm Street parking garage with units. Um, the exterior design for that infill continued the upper level language um, down to this lower level. Um, additionally, during that HCC um, approval process, there was a substitution to remove the brick and substitute it with a clabbered siding. And also at the uh, lower level, um, we've introduced a stamped concrete at the foundation that was part of the original HCC approval, but that language has been extended throughout the rest of the building. Um, as far as the general configuration of the building, it's largely the same, um, with the exception of those um, comments that um, I had previously stated. So um, if there's any specific questions, we're happy to answer those, but um, that's the overview. Thank you. All right, moving on then to the public hearing in this. Uh, Director members, any correspondence on this one? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. I'll open this up for any public comment. Anybody from the audience looking to comment on this? <clears throat> if you could just uh, give us your name and uh, address or affiliation, please. My name is Matt Denall. I'm a butter on two sides of this project. Um, I just have some concerns. They're not wild concerns. They're just reasonable concerns. Uh, moving forward, if the uh, project gets full approval, I'd like to see uh, uh, some sort of timeline where I'd be appraised of uh, any impact to me or my business, starting with groundbreaking utilities, outages, access to church court, and any other items that may impact my land and business as an abutter. Um, as far as traffic, any changes or potential impacts anticipated due to the development of 85 Elm Street development, um, let me know, please, in advance so that I can app appropriate a plan or, uh, appropriately <laughs> accommodate that. Um, I'd like to see, uh, um, I'm concerned that there might be um, uh, uh, noise levels that will uh, impact me and my, my business and my tenants. I'd like to see a schedule adhered to that does not impact myself 
in my property too early in the morning or too late in the evening. I'm sure there's rules that the uh, town has that there these will be held to. Um, access, I will always require or uh, access to my property from Green Street and Church Court. And if that is not possible, an agreeable, agreeable arrangement that, uh, that addresses that issue, I'd also like to see access to my backyard in some fashion from Church Court or thereabouts. Um, lighting, I'm concerned that lighting from the project during and after construction be appropriately provided so as not to be too bright after dark. Uh, I would like to be kept, uh, kept abreast of all impactful uh, events from the developer and the city that would affect access to my property as well as my utilities well in advance of these events. Uh, parking. If my current parking is impacted, some agreeable solution be provided to me and my tenants either by the city or the developer or both. As or, uh, far as landscaping, I would like, I uh, would prefer an abutting property which is uh, on two sides of my property, be landscaped tastefully and with trees and shrubs that provide uh, a visual and audio barrier between my property and the development. And finally, um, as a side note, uh, any utilities such as water and sewer that are discovered on church court, which I sec suspect there might be water and sewer, um, be maintained when the road gets repaired. And that's it. Any other members of the public to comment? Okay. We'll close out the public hearing and open up for questions from the board. Ah. Sorry. All right, cool. Um, so I'm very happy to have you guys back. I was wondering when you guys were going to come back. So um, very happy to see that things went well with the HDC. Um, um, I'm happy with the compromise that you guys have struck with them. I like the design. Um, I would have preferred brick, but I understand. Um, but there's one thing that's given me heartburn, guys. Last time you were here, there was a parking lot. Where, where did, what happened? Where did it go? Do you mean the underground, like the no, surface No, 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 adjacent. Adjacent to the, the building yeah, is so where yeah, the hotel you, is. You mean 67 Elm? Yeah. Well, Sorry, so this is Rob Previty. I'm one of the owner applicants. Um, so 67 Elm is a, another great parcel for potential redevelopment. And after we had our initial meetings with the SRTC, we kind of rethought having that in the project as opposed to a source for leased offsite parking. So we have a couple different options for, for where our offsite parking will be, um, kind of verbal commitments from, from either property we own or uh, landowners that are proximate to the development. Um, we'd like to be able to reserve 67 Elm for potential redevelopment at some point in the future. But in the, you know, if we need it for parking for this site, we would lease parking spaces to this site for this project. That way, you know, they're, they're leased. It's what would be approved as part of a condition for a building permit. But if we have the opportunity to redevelop 67 Elm into something other than the parking lot, which I think would be, you know, better for the city overall. We could always come back without a site plan approval as long as we can show that there's enough aggregate parking between the two sites at, at that point in time. We have no, like, present intent. It's just thinking about how, how to use that, that parcel of land for its kind of highest and best use. Um, I think, as I said, it would probably be a benefit to every, you know, to, to the public in general if that's not a parking lot forever associated with this site understood mm -hmm. you know and uh, and obviously it's your parcel to do as you see fit mm -hmm. i will say when when i i was celebrating at home when i saw the hdca you know i was like yeah we did it you know, we're, we're, we're there it's going to go yeah. right through right through planning it's going to be great mm -hmm. and then i opened up the pack and said where's the parking lot no now we got to go back to work right so mm -hmm. uh I, i'd like to hear a little bit more about what your proposed off-street parking your leases that you're looking to do um, mm -hmm. Or is is it down on Main Street? Is it adjacent? Is it private? Uh, yeah, so private? Yeah, it, it's primarily private. Um, it's all private. It's all, private. Yeah. Um, it's all within probably three blocks at the most, two blocks of this um, of this site. Okay. And, and just to reemphasize, like we have 67 Elm in our back pocket as a source of that offsite parking. 
We just don't want to necessarily lock it into the project, you know, and, and kind of prevent future development there. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rivet, I, I uh, my, my question's quick. Um, so 67 Elm, while you're trying to decide what to do with that parcel, so first of all, I agree with you. Uh, you hate to see a parcel like that eaten up by parking. Is that building going to come down so at least the the visual of your – of you know what you I mean if you look at what you're doing it looks great so you just hate to see that hidden by that we we have a um, demolition permit that requires the building to come down effectively this year the kind of whether whether we 2024 2024 yeah sorry not 2023 <laughs> the kind of, the, the, my, my, the, my, my 365 days from now yeah um, so that, that that has to happen whether you know no matter what happens with that project okay. we have we kind of own that liability yeah Okay. And, so, and as I understand, the building department is very anxious for it to come down as well. So, Okay. That's all I have. Mr. Whittem, then Mr. Richardson, Mr. Goodwin. Thank you. Um, I don't have any objection to removing the underground uh, parking and converting that into units. Uh, I get the math. Uh, mm -hmm. That does require you to be a little more creative with how we get to the 1.3. Uh, I, I do understand the idea to use uh, some uh, off-site spaces. Uh, do those need to be specifically articulated as part of site plan approval uh, to get to the 1.3? Because I know when we did the leasing of the spaces on Main Street, that was an important criteria. So does this have to be specifically called out or not? I think that's the discussion for the board. Uh, the applicant does have, he, they are working on uh, reserving spaces uh, within walking distance of this. So uh, I think staff could handle this administratively uh, to make sure that we get to the 1.3. And, and just from our perspective, at least, you know, we're trying to avoid putting like long term lease commitments in place when we don't have approvals. We'd like to handle that kind of in the period between site plan approval and the pull, pulling of the building permit. So in other words, if we don't pull 1.3 parking spaces at that time, we're just not building 152 units. You know, that, that that's... Yeah, no, and don't, don't get me wrong. I don't, yeah. I don't have an ob objection to the yeah. to the notion of utilizing those, th those other places. I think it's yep. a creative way to do things. Yep. Um, my question, and, and I'm thinking out loud here, so apologies, but if all of a sudden you have a, an arrangement with uh, owner A three blocks away, mm -hmm. uh, owner A sells their property, uh, and uh, the new owner A isn't so intrigued and does not renew your lease agreement for those mm -hmm. parking spaces, then we're not at the 1.3 anymore. We're at something less causes you to scramble to figure out and so how, how do we just navigate that I mean just help me with it I mean that's that's really our risk I mean we're out of you know out of compliance effectively if we don't have enough parking spaces we're looking to do bullies on like a long-term basis so you know hopefully we're not you know kind of at the whim of a, a change in ownership and kind of on top of that like I said again we have the 67 elm parcel that we control that again, like we're putting, we're going to put in the pool if we can't get satisfactory leases in place. Uh, yeah, so I did have a condition in uh, final plan approval that the lease agreements would have to be, um, they'd have to be recorded at Registry of Deeds. The, a, no, a notice of lease? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. not the full lease. I, I, I was going to ask, I, I think it's just important that we somehow memorialize this and that mm -hmm. does that. So, mm -hmm. and, and it would need legal review right. as well. Yeah. I'm good with that. Um, a real uh, technical question. So, um, you know, a net positive out of this is that we do reduce the grade out of uh, on Church Street, which I've spoken about being uh, problematic. It doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it better, so that's good. Uh, is that vertical granite curb on Church Street when it gets reconstructed? So to, to channel water because it'll flow down there uh, pretty quickly. I Getting a, a head nod yes from my engineer, so I'm gonna. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, and we're we're putting in a couple of drainage structures at the bottom of the hill there. Got it. Um, so the the grade, I, I believe, it's only about a percent better, but it's better. It's it's, it's <laughs> as good as we could do, um, and it's slightly better. So mm -hmm. it's it's steep. Right. But I do see the water just coming down Church Street. And once it's paved and nice and smooth, <laughs> it's going to come down there pretty rapid. So I appreciate the drainage structures at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, we have mm -hmm. you know, drainage at the bottom, and that'll tie into the, the closed drainage system that exists. And we're also upgrading that pipe all the way to Washington. That's very good. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Richardson and then Mr. Edward. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was also glad that it went by uh, the HDC. Um, I was, I never saw a brick as necessary, but I did, I did like the idea of a little bit more color that was on your first plan, but I'm satisfied with this one. So, <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, it, it's, it, it, you're not going to hide this building downtown. So if it's going to be visible, then maybe a little color in my mind would be a, something that's attractive, but, uh, I'm willing to let that one go. Um, the, um, I've heard something different since I got here this morning, but if you, or this evening, but can you explain the, the dumpster situation, what that's going to be like? I mean, I'm asking for a reason, so. It, yeah, Neil, Neil can speak to that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's the same. We didn't change the configuration from the original approval. Uh, there's, there's, we have two, two dumpster locations, or one location, two dumpsters. Um, and the idea is they would be they would be roll out bins, so that they would have to be rolled out of the enclosure for the truck to pick them up, and then put back in the enclosure. Because I, I don't know why I didn't notice this earlier. Because there's no way that a front load truck would be able to pick those up. Where if that's what the case was going to be without doing that. So right. Yeah, and they're if, they're smaller than a traditional yeah, dumpster, yeah, so the the pickup frequency will likely need to be higher than it. Yeah. You know, maybe at a, a typical apartment building. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I appreciate that. I, that response, so that's, that, that solves my issue. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Goodwin, then Mr. Horton. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, question on, just to make sure that my math is mathing here. Uh, original proposal was 128. You're converting the parking level to 14 additional apartments, and then you're picking up 10 units from reconfiguring your existing unit layouts. Is that mm -hmm. math correct? Um, uh, the basement, uh, the lower level is 11 units. 11 units. So you're picking up 11 units in the parking level, and then the 13 additional units are from reconfigured layouts. Correct. Okay. Um, so the unit size has shrunk. That's what I'm getting at here, just for matter of record. Yes, they, they were uh, oversized units previously. Yeah, they were large one bedrooms. Yep. Yeah, we've made them, you know, more market. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, and I believe the breakdown was uh, six. Uh, so we're, you're targeting a, a two hundred and what was the math? Two hundred and six parking spaces. Is that right? Total for one hundred and fifty-eight units. That sounds right. Um, and you have 147 secured, so you're on the hunt for 59 more parking spaces, approximately. Um, I'm fine with the offsite lease arrangement. I've done that in uh, my day job, a very similar context to this. Uh, 59 is a lot. <laughs> um, I'm glad to hear that you already have some leads. Um, I guess my inclination is when we I guess for the benefit of the board, I've, I've done this before on several projects where we get approval conditional on securing offsite parking and it is the risk of the owner to secure that parking and then it is somehow, the city has somehow has a clawback or authority on enforcing um, that that lease is maintained or we, the owner then provides parking in some other fashion. So I'm generally comfortable with that. Um, I think the provisions Michelle has called for with the recording of the notice um, is good. Um, I think for me, in terms of timing on when that comes, um, just because it is so many spaces, if it were like 20 spaces, I would be less worried about them figuring it out. Um, but because it's so many, I think the community and the I personally would like to have a sense of security sooner than later that those spaces are secured. So 
Um, I guess we'll figure that out when we get to the motion section, but um, figuring out when that needs th those leases need to be secured by, um, to me, is the biggest um, sort of hang up there. Um, the other comment I have is that this, I uh, actually really like the revised design. I think it's an improvement, so uh, congratulations on that. Um, on the landscape plan, and I didn't keep my prior packet, so I apologize, um, but I seem to recall that there was slightly more vegetation along Elm Street. On that elevation of the building, you're effectively a six-story structure. You're five stories of inhabited space, and then you have an egress level with doors. So it's quite imposing. I know it's an urban site. I'm not too worried about the height of the structure necessarily, but you it's a very uh, unforgiving street experience on Elm. Um, and I think that would be greatly improved by additional plantings. And right now I'm seeing two trees uh, sort of along Elm and uh, a couple shrubs around a transformer and a couple trees on the corner of church. So. I'm more worried about the sort of the gaps. There's a lot of gaps here in terms of screening or softening up the edge of, of, of this condition a bit. And I was wondering if you could speak to that. I don't have the old plan in front of me either, but I do not believe we removed any landscaping from Elm Street from the prior approval. Would you be open to putting some shrubs or plantings in here? What's the ground cover assumed to be in these locations? I would just be right now it's just grass so you'd have grass here and you'd have someone go out there and weed whack the foundation of this building yeah um, I mean that well, so where yeah where we can I do, do you have any proposals I don't love it <laughs> I mean I'm not a landscape oh, architect yes. so <laughs> um, the, I'm not. Side of the concrete goes right up to the face of the building for 80 percent of the building so it's concrete right up to the building. No. So that oh, that's a walkway. It's a sidewalk, yeah. Oh, okay. This makes a little more sense now, and doesn't help. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't have to mow it. You don't have to. Worry. I think it's the help. Either. Got it. Okay, yeah, because it's egress. That makes sense. Okay, well, listen, you've got some planning beds here. Now I see this. I would I would highly encourage you, and I think this can be done administratively, uh, to put some tall shrubs. I'm not asking for trees or, or some, something there to soften up that edge because you're going to go from six-story building essentially to sidewalk to tiny little planting bed to street and parking. And it's, it's, and it's an urban site. I'm fine with that. Uh, I just think you could do a, a small lift here, a couple thousand bucks in plants, and it will make a world of difference. We're, we're open to that. Um, if possible, we'd like it to be an administrator. Just kind of Absolutely, yeah. I'm good. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Wharton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, too, uh, agree with the uh, the amendments to the plan. Uh, not included was the original lighting plan. I'm just kind of curious if you could talk to the additional, will the lights remain that we talked about on Elm Street. Uh, I think we talked about four or five additional uh, light bases going down through Elm Street. Just wanted to make sure that that was defined in the off-site improvements. So it looks like the original photometric plan didn't make it into this set, but the, the intent would be the same as the original. Um, because the layout of the parking area didn't didn't change, there shouldn't, I think, was it building that matter? Or? Poles. It was Poles, yeah. So the, the, the intent would, would be the same as the original, improver, original approval. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think one of the original conditions was had something to do with adding lighting yeah. um, on Elm on the Elm side as well. And I just I just my last comment was uh, um, throughout the project, uh, can we just maintain good communications with the planning department to ensure that all the abutters are informed on mm -hmm. progressing the project and any impacts um, that may become before them? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I assume there'll be like a construction mitigation and management plan of some sort as well, which we're obviously comfortable with. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think the abutters' comments regarding site lighting, uh, I think, are addressed by the prior plan set. 
you know, we are, we, we do look at a photometric plan. It can't allow light to bleed onto surrounding properties. Our requirements <coughs> require that all lighting be downlit and shielded. Uh, I'm sure we ferreted that out when we went through the original plan set, so I'm comfortable with, with what we approved there. Um, I think his requests are simple to be notified if there's going to be road closure on Church Street or if there's going to be any utility impacts. Uh, I'm going to trust in our processes here in the city with uh, excavation permits, uh, utility connection permits, and those sorts of things that our public works and engineering staff would be mindful of notifying abutters of any impacts there. So, uh, but just sharing it publicly mm -hmm. here uh, to, to be mindful of that. Uh, Mr. Nanola is right that he does have a fair amount of access need off of Church Street. Uh, obviously, when we reconstruct that, there's going to be an impact. I think he recognizes that and just wants uh, mm -hmm. some notice so that he can plan uh, accordingly there. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reasonable request that he has. And again, I'll lean on our processes to, uh, to navigate that. So uh, thank you. Any other discussion from the board? Um, looking for a motion then around regional impact. Uh, I move that the application does not have regional impact. Motion by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Robias. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Director Mears, don't believe there's any other waivers requested here that you can bring through with us. None this evening. Okay. Walk us through the uh, site plan items for. Then, yes, uh, so plan revisions, uh, revised sheet 1 of 1 by Horizons, uh, be updated for lot 176 to reflect the applicant owners, the property, and the ownership of church court to be updated as a city owned right away. Please update uh, G-100 notes under grading and drainage notes number 8 for the contractor to confirm with the city staff the condition of the manhole in Washington Street. The structure may need to be replaced or Upsize the storm drain connection if in a poor condition at the developer's expense. Any outstanding comments from third party review completed by Horsley Winton for the drainage report shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Any all outstanding comments associated with site plan amendment from third party review from Vanessa and Associates will be addressed to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, landscape uh, shall be added to Elm Street. Uh, which will be addressed to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. Applicants shall provide draft uh, lease agreements and site plan identifying off-street parking prior to the final endorsement of plans. These lease agreements will be required to the review by uh, cities legal. An escrow shall be collected in the amount of 1000 or as determined by the Director of Planning and Community Development to cover the cost of review. All parking lease agreements, license, and associated site plan shall be recorded at Stratford County Registry of Deeds prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. This shall also include access parking <coughs> easements for map 10, lot 178. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, licensed land surveyor, and landscape architect. Uh, all federal and state permits uh, shall be in place before signing of the plans and recording. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Construction cost estimate for the project shall be submitted. Building plan shall bear the stamp of a certified fire protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection systems, fire alarm monitoring and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, or any other fire protection related safety systems required by national or New Hampshire code. A pre-construction meeting is required. An escrow account in the amount set by the city's contract engineer agreeable to the Department of Development Service will be established for site inspections. A performance surety in the amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but no less than 25 percent of the cost of site construction uh, will be established. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. Erosion control shall be properly installed prior to any construction. All applicants requiring a stormwater management and erosion control plan shall submit relevant pollutant, pollutant accounting information to their Director of Planning and Community Development. The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits to the Department of Public Works. This shall include, but not limited to, driveway permit, utility poles, license, and trench permits. 
landscaping survival security it, for 10% of the total cost of landscaping. The structures will require new address assignments. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer. Uh, per section 19.23.e.9, the building shall bear, uh, shall display the designated address number in such a manner to be plainly visible from the street and it shall be 3.5 inches in height and be reflective. Uh, conditions applicable during and after construction, a copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of Development Ser Services annually before July 1st. All landscaping shown on the plan shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded. All conditions listed in the March 15, 2023 site plan 20-2023 and CUP1 dash 2023 notice of decision shall remain applicable to the project. Proper backfall devices shall be installed prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy and as built plans will be required. I move that the request of 85 Elm Street Summersworth LLC for site plan amendment to remove the underground parking and add 24 additional residential units for a total of 152 units within the four-story building and a total of 158 units on site to be approved with the conditions here stated within the director's memo. Question maybe Mr. Horton, do I have a second? Second. Uh, I think Mr. Gordon Beach, <laughs> sorry. Um, all right. Discussion point? Any discussion? Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate the condition here about the March 15th uh, conditions of approval. You know, if anybody's watching at home, uh, yeah, this is a big project. We did a lot of work back in March uh, to get to where we are today. This is just addressing those additional uh, units and some of the parking and just, I think, reiterating some of the more important conditions of approval. But um, I know with that March 15th conditions of approval, a, a significant discussion point. I, I just want to allay the fears of residents in the area that uh, they do have a condition to submit a, I think it's a pest mitigation plan concerned about, you know, disrupting, you know, uh, less than desirable uh, animals in the area during this construction project. So that's still in effect according to this. So thank you. No swarms of rats. Yeah, we're cats. Or cats, yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, yeah. balance, yeah. right? It's whatever is down cats there. and rats. <laughs> all right. So motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? Excellent. It's done. Right. Thank, you thank, thank you very you. much. Hopefully we don't see Happy you holidays. because you've got shovels in. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Moving on next to uh, new business item 4C. Uh, Bridgestone Retail Operations LLC are seeking, seeking a site plan amendment to, to remove the rear door closure requirement on a property located at 442 High Street, Map 38, Lot 3, Site 21 2023. Okay. I don't believe we need a motion to accept this. Oh, no, we do. Please. Uh, Director Mears. Planning Board approved the site plan to construct a 6,000 square foot motor vehicle repair facility in June 2020. Applicants sought a waiver from section 11.6.D, uh, which is now 12.6. Uh, oh, sorry. In the current regulations, the buffer yard requirements class B, the waiver from this requirement was granted with the following conditions attached. There shall be an eight foot vinyl fence installed in place of the six foot wooden stockade. The rear door shall remain closed during business operations with the exception of vehicles entering and exiting. The existing vegetation on the northeast side of the lot along the property line between the applicant's property map 38 lot 5 shall be preserved in an effort to retain a buffer from the commercial use. The site received a special exception to permit the use of motor vehicle uh, repair garage station. The zoning board of adjustment during uh, their meeting attached the following conditions. During the site plan review, the planning board sh shall pay special attention to the noise of the garage and its impact on the residential neighborhoods, both on High and Middle Street, as well as traffic flow on Middle Street. The existing vegetation on the northeast side 
of the lot along the property line between the applicant's property map 38 lot 5 shall be preserved in an effort to retain a buffer from the commercial use the applicant has been before the planning board for compliance hearings regarding this condition of approval uh, with the doors being remain closed during business operation, the applicant is seeking amendment to the site plan by requesting to move the following condition of approval for the buffer, wa buffer yard waiver. The rear door shall remain closed during business operations with the exception of vehicles entering and exiting. Do you have a motion to accept the application as complete for review? So moved. Mr. Horton. Uh, any second? Second to Mr. Robitis. Discussion? All right. All those in favor? Closed. All right, excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'll invite the applicant to speak. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Patrick Casella, area manager, Firestone Complete Auto Care, uh, specifically the one here in Summersworth. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak today and accepting this this hearing to amend the uh, condition of our site plan agreement, uh, requiring us to keep our bay doors shut in the rear of our building. Uh, the reason why we are seeking this approval here is based on a couple different factors here. Um, First and foremost is just the number of hearings that I've been called to um, versus the amount of uh, notifications that we've received from residents regarding those bay doors being open. Um, to my understanding, that condition is in place to protect the residents from noise. Uh, I think that that's very clear as that's why that amendment, uh, excuse me, that condition is in place. Um, and uh, I believe on in 2022, we received a notification from a resident that bay doors were open causing noise which is a disruption completely understandable completely warranted and we took swift action to correct said issue placing signage inside of our building uh, heightening the awareness around our procedure and policies in place with doors being shut uh, and even putting a time stamp on said policy as well uh, the second time that we were called in front of you fine people uh, was a couple of months ago I believe in June of this year uh, where the city of Somersworth actually made us aware that we were violating our site plan agreement and it was not a an actual resident um, again I commend this city for holding businesses accountable quite frankly for their site plan agreements um, it speaks to your integrity and I, and I truly respect that um, however I do feel that the point of that condition is to protect the integrity of, of the sound and, and making sure that the residents are not interrupted or impacted by said sound of air cools cars whatever that noise may be that we're using to repair vehicles so that would be uh the first it's just a number of of simple escalations if you will okay um, now i want to make it very very clear to this board and to the residents of, of summers uh summersworth excuse me that this will not change the behavior if this is granted that this is removed from our site plan agreement we will still have heightened awareness of our bay doors we will still ensure that they are shut in a timely fashion and there will no longer uh, simply be a restriction that's enforced by by summer's worth um, that requires us to keep them shut the behavior will remain it's just that piece in our site plan agreement that we would like to have removed uh, we also would like you guys to utilize the resources that you are currently using uh, to police this site plan agreement in this particular condition elsewhere as well uh, so it kind of makes everyone's life a little easier I guess you can call it right so that is my in my case, I guess you can call it in regards to amending this uh, condition in our site plan agreement, and I'll open it up for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, Director Nurse, do we have any correspondence on this matter? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll open up the public hearing. If there's any members of the public who would like to comment on this item, please feel free. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Jessica Brackett, and I reside at 3 Shabbat Street. Let me first be clear. The disturbances does not equate to the number of escalations he's outlined. The disturbances are frequent and are severe. Um, as a neighborhood at the time of the original planning approval, we expressed concern about another garage being built so close. The concession was made to keep the rear garage doors shut. There were multiple waivers in very few conditions. This was an important one to the sanctity of our neighborhood, which is close as you will hear tonight. And 
um, Firestone, known to you as Bridgestone Rental uh, Retail Operations, has not been respectful of that agreement, often leaving their doors open, so the requirement should be enforced more strictly, not be allowed to be removed. I have an unobstructed line of sight to their garage doors and security lights from my living room. Many of us in the neighborhood are denied the enjoyment of our own property as we're subjected to loud impact drivers, banging of metal on metal, and mechanics yelling while in our homes and in our yards. Not to mention that they use the neighborhood as their personal test track, which requires that they illegally turn left into our cul-de-sac with a right turn only sign right in front of them. I've personally watched them do so numerous times and often on the same day, different vehicles with excessive noise and speed testing what's wrong with these vehicles. I strongly recommend that Firestone be denied the removal of the rear door closure requirement. It's a very reasonable expectation. And just because we are courteous and try to be tolerant does not mean that we have not been disturbed. It is excessive and the number of escalations do not represent the d what they had done to our neighborhood, and I would ask that you would more strictly enforce this requirement. Thank you. I am David Parker, 1 East Street. One thing I would ask, uh, there have been a number of complaints where they have not abided by the rules that were established by your committee. Is there any way of having an escalation to the consequences for their violations? Uh, it appears that they are quite willing to violate the ordinance and if there is some means of making it more painful each time they violate it, that would be appreciated and I certainly hope that you don't vote to take away that requirement to protect our quiet neighborhood from the noise. Hello everybody, Andre Martineau, 6 East Street. Um, a lot of things I have on my paper what were already mentioned. Uh, we walk our dogs several times a day around the neighborhood. We didn't check today, but the last two days, walk by, doors wide open. Um, our quality of life has changed dramatically since that's gone in from, I'm not up here just to complain about having a commercial building, but the impacts. Their lights are so high that they shine into many of our houses. They leave the doors open, the impact wrenches, everything she mentioned is all loud. I also want to say we see when they turn left all the time and they go fast around our neighborhood. It really got me mad the other night when my daughter had to grab her, grand, her daughter, which is my granddaughter. My wife had to grab the other one and I ran the other side because people were whipping around the corner of the street. We know they're not neighbors, they're not visitors. They're the ones that are always testing their cars around the neighborhood constantly. Those doors are open almost all the time in the spring, summer and fall and on Warren Bays in the winter. So if you take a drive by, peek over they're probably open so what he's saying that that's watched and regulated is completely untrue um, also you know we have a pool my wife works from home we have nice doors that go right out so we we've always loved that so we uh, you know can hear nature and everything and concentrate on the work now it is so loud with everything we have to keep those beautiful doors closed at all times because it's just just such a nuisance and I'm kind of appalled that a 29.48 billion dollar company is a little bit inconvenienced by this and they agreed to these terms and now they want to change them. It's so unfair to the residents that's affecting all of our quality of life for them not wanting to be bothered by the police and ignoring what your rules were put forward and just doing their own thing there and nothing ever gets done about it. Um, let's see what else. I think most of the other stuff is, oh, and the other thing, the sound, um, they did do what they were supposed to do and put the vinyl fence up and trees, which we all, we've heard people saying the buffer here, many people have that same issue with buffers, and they have done it, but a vinyl fence offers little or no sound protection. 
Uh, they also do not maintain that property at all. It goes all year without being mowed, weed whacked, anything. They put signs on the corner of the um, sidewalk so you cannot see when you're pulling out to your right to pull out on the high street, which is a busy street. Um, and when we moved there a little over seven years ago, you could walk the dog, everyone walked around, we know all the neighbors, most of us are friends. Um, the kids ride bicycles around, everything. Now we can't do any of that because of the added traffic. It's actually a safety issue now because of all these people going through and we're all concerned. We don't have sidewalks in the neighborhood, so that is what we have to walk around, you know, other than on being out on the busy high street. So um, please, please don't let this pass for them to do this. It's just really affecting the quality of life. We love the town. We love how people have a say here. And you guys really listen. We really appreciate it. So you hope you'll, you'll listen to us. Thank you. The, prop, the thing we're talking about. Um, and there's really not a whole lot more to, that I have to say uh, other than I want to make sure that I put my two cents worth in and tell you I'm not happy with anything the way this has worked. Um, and uh, I was one of the ones that started talking about the buffer zone and uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, my side is still good, but the uh, other side of the trees are completely dead and it's wide open. I can see that whole fence from the back side of my, my house. Uh, I put in a big garage, I mean a big uh, uh, porch. I can't sit out there anymore. Before they were there, I could sit out there in the morning and have a cup of coffee and enjoy it. All I hear is banging and smashing and 5.30 in the morning here in metal getting clanged around all over the place um, don't uh, don't it, try to get rid of, of the the uh, thing don't change it uh, I would have I would have I would be a lot better if you would increase the the uh, problem I mean not the you know what I mean anyway uh, that's all I have to say I just it, it is irritating very irritating and uh, that's that's it. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew where I felt. Thank you. Hi, Cindy Paraski, 27 Roll Street. Um, I've been living in that neighborhood for 20 years. As you may be may or not know, um, it's a one way to come in and one way to go out. I walk my dog. We, there are no sidewalks in that part of the street. I'll be walking by. The doors will be open. Frequently, I do see vehicles pull out of that back area, come the wrong way down the street, race around our neighborhood, and pull back in. They're testing their cars out. The doors are open. They don't care. There may be signs in there, but taking this one restriction away it should be further enforced there should be more enforcement and we got a stop sign and they're getting they're disrupting our lives it is not safe on our in our little neighborhood again I've been there for 20 years and it's not the same neighborhood anymore since the tire shop has moved in so thank you Uh, David Brackett over on uh, Shabbat Street. Um, in full agreement of all the neighborhood opinions that have already been voiced, um, I'd just like to bring to the group's attention as well that this is not the first time that we've dealt with uh, noise from vehicle repair and tire shops in our neighborhood. Um, about eight to ten years ago, there was an issue with some subletters on the back of what was then bread and butter, uh, which you may now know as the Bali State House property. Um, and we had substantial issues uh, with unmitigated auto repair um, at that time. Um, as I understood the situation then, they weren't properly um, permissioned to be doing that work at all. So um, the process was a little bit more streamlined to get it taken care of, but it was still many months that we could not go out into our yards, have a casual conversation, because I couldn't, from, from here to, to you, 
um, I could not hear members of my family speaking to me um, because of the noise. And the only change since that time has been the removal of buffer zones and an increase of the ability of the auditory impact to be transmitted into our yards and into our, our home spaces. Um, and just to touch on the point that the manager made earlier, um, if the enforcement is removed, um, any promises of continued behavior uh, hold no weight because our ability to have recourse to address those infractions um, in their disregard to how that we, we live in these places that have been established for many decades before they even got approved um, will be taken away. So we, we desperately need the ability to have a recourse um, to address these issues. Um, in addition to the fact that they agreed prior to breaking ground to any construction being made that said, yes, it's a very reasonable way that we can conduct our business. So the fact that they have infracted, or that they have so many infractions just speaks to the fact that they're not being um, true to their word um, throughout this whole process. Um, and I would like to voice a, another voice of agreement that if there's any way that we can increase the, the penalties, um, I think perhaps maybe we could see some improvement in their behavior at that point. Um, but it doesn't leave much hope on our end, um, certainly at the time. So uh, thank you for your time, and I hope that you're hearing more voices that say this, this can't move forward. How's it going? Uh, my name is uh, Josh Barrow. Um, me and my wife actually recently in the last uh, I want to say six months. We recently moved to Summersworth. We moved to on uh, Rural Street, and um, that actually the uh, Firestone being there actually came up a conversation with our realtor. You know, I asked her about noise, and she brought up, um, you know, the uh, the rule where they have to keep the doors shut. Um, so we thought most of the noise would be coming from Walmart. You know, right right in our backyard, not a big deal, um, but that was completely false. It's coming from that that Firestone that's, you know, right over there. Um, I do notice sometimes the doors are open. I don't see cars pulling out at that time. Um, and <clears throat> I don't know about any of you guys, but, you know, a sign with no penalty, it doesn't really stop anything from happening. I can look at a sign and I can just ignore it. And if there's no punishment for it, then, you know, there's nothing stopping me from doing whatever I'm not supposed to be doing. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's all I have to say. And, you know, I think we should like they said, increase the penalties for it, so. Hello, my name is Lori Martino, and I live at 6 East Street. And when we moved here in 2016, I was really excited to move to this wonderful city. We came from a town of 220 people. It was really hard to convince my husband to come here. He wanted a house with a barn, and I fell in love with this beautiful cape on 6 East Street. The first few years were wonderful. And then it, when Firestone moved in, our little friendly neighborhood completely changed. I have the benefit of working remotely. When I purchased, well, excuse me, when my husband and I purchased this house, I did not purchase it knowingly that I would have to keep my beautiful French doors closed because I can't hear the people on the other end. And I work as a billing specialist. I may be advocating for many of your medical bills that are not getting paid. And they can't hear me. I can't hear them. They hang up. Um, I am on some days I'm forced to go into the office more frequently because I'm like oh my god I got too many important calls to make too many appeals to make so it is just disrupting my life and my professional life we have as my husband stated earlier we have a pool it's really hard to enjoy your pool when you have all this banging um, what Firestone may be unaware of is that when their doors are open we can even hear their phones ringing they also do not take and respect the neighborhood, the land. Um, they can go a whole year, which by the way, I have pictures of, um, and, the and the weeds are literally this high. But isn't it convenient that they just remodeled and, well, I should say remodel, re landscape just before this big, you know, town meeting. Um, and then I guess the other thing is, is that it's just so disruptive to um, our lives and everything that um, 
all our neighborhood has said is 100% validated. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Open this up for the board. Mr. Whedon and then Mr. Berry. Where to start because it's a bit of a uh, a storied path here, right? So um, I believe twice we have held in these chambers in front of the planning board uh, compliance hearings with Firestone and the representative that, 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 that is here tonight. Uh, those are generated when violations of our site plan uh, approval process, and you heard with some of the prior applications here tonight, there are conditions of approval. A condition of approval with this project, among many, is to, to keep the rear door shut. Uh, those uh, concerns are, are uh, of the door being open uh, are identified by our code enforcement officer, uh, not the police. So I don't want the public thinking that the police are <coughs> spending their time looking for these issues. They're not. Uh, it's our code enforcement office. Uh, sometimes just on wh what I'll call active uh, investigation, you know, out and about looking around in the community. Uh, and in many cases, it's driven by uh, a complaint, uh, by a citizen, uh, by a planning board member, city councilor, city, other city staff member. Um, in the most recent uh, compliance hearing that we held, uh, it was noted that the door being open was identified by our code enforcement officer. Uh, and the discussion that arose at that meeting was, is this really an issue of noise in the neighborhood or not, or is it just a nuisance issue because the code compliance officer knows the doors are supposed to be shut? And I, I suppose our conjecture around that uh, was uh, enough to have the applicant say, well, maybe it is just a nuisance issue for code enforcement and it's not an issue for the, the neighborhood. Uh, does not appear to be the case. Uh, uh, if I was a betting man, I think I know that the doors being opened does create noise uh, to the surrounding and neighborhood. I'll be frank, I've been on the planning board for a long time. That is an odd condition of approval to have a door remain shut. Uh, for the very reason we're here tonight. Uh, it is difficult to enforce upon employees, and I do applaud the applicant. I, I, I do believe that you're trying, uh, whether you've posted signs, you've had meetings, uh, trainings, <coughs> what have you. Uh, the weakest link in any project is the human element, right? And uh, uh, I suspect you're like many where uh, there's a bit of an ebb and flow of employees in and out, right? It's hard to maintain a consistent workforce in just about any uh, work environment these days. That just compounds uh, this particular issue. So, um, I, I, obviously, I can't support this uh, tonight. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. It, it seems as though the, the noise is an issue. Um, I know that we had the new Jeep dealership that's being built on Route 108 in front of us uh, six, eight months ago now. And we heard from abutters then, because uh, that abuts a, a residential neighborhood as well. Uh, certainly not as close as this uh, uh, store is, uh, but it, it, it's a much bigger building and it abuts. Um, and we had a, a robust discussion then about their door. They have one door that faces out back. You will drive in and then access I think it's 18 service bays inside through that one rear door. So it's one door, uh, and that dealership is uh, both radiant floor heat and uh, the uh, space where the mechanics will work is air conditioned. So uh, the, I guess, desire to keep the door open is less in, in that environment. And we, we heard from the representatives of the dealership then too that uh, they use far, they don't use many uh, pneumatic tools anymore in their business. They use battery operated tools, which tend to be quieter um, and things of that nature. So there was really a, a strong effort to suggest that uh, that's going to be managed. So I don't think we put this door closure requirement on them. Uh, 
Uh, and I know we've talked with you before about, you know, if you air condition that space, that would help. I, I think you've added fans, maybe that helps a little yep. bit, but uh, it's an issue that's <coughs> gonna require ongoing work. Uh, I think certainly removing this requirement doesn't help the cause. So uh, that's a long way to say, yeah, I'm not gonna change the requirement. Mr. Berry. Thank you. Um, first off, thank you all for coming out. Um, you know, up to this point, you know, we, we've met with, uh, with, with Bridgestone. You know, we, it's been a one-sided deal. You know, um, I don't live there, right? You do, right? Um, we always know that having a business with an open door facing the neighborhood, it's going to project sound. We just don't know how loud it's going to be. You know, and I suppose um, thinking about Councillor Witham's statement there with the Jeep dealership, the bay door is facing, it's not even facing the same direction as the um, houses behind it. So it's not quite the same. Where these guys, it's literally facing straight at them, which is a problem, right? And I know things were things have been done. You, you've tried to do as much buffer space as you can. You put up the fence. I don't know if, it, if that's true or not. Um, you know, what you say that the, uh, the vinyl actually reduces sound or it doesn't, I don't know. Um, I know efforts have been made. I applaud that. Um, the question is, is it enough, right? And I know as long as I've been on this board, I remember when it was approved, I remember at the time I wasn't feeling really great about it. You know, I, I wasn't a big fan of the doors in the back. And every time that you've been called back, I've thought about it more and more. And I say, I, I think we got it wrong. I think we got it wrong. I don't think there should be doors on the back of that building at all, to be frank. Um, um, and I don't know what is in our abilities as a planning board, considering the site plan's already been approved. I, I don't know if we have the ability to say, we need to turn those doors into a wall. Lock them. Sorry, they're, they're, they're windows now. They're, they're no longer usable. Um, let me ask you, um, what are your thoughts about just having it be one, one side? I think that that, I think the noise and trying to eliminate the noise completely is in, in that particular cir circumstance, I don't think is the solution. I think based off of the doors being in the back and the operations of our business and protecting the integrity of our customers who are coming into our stores and providing a safe work environment for our employees, removing those doors, I think heightens that a bit. Um, that would require us driving through one bay to another bay uh, to then properly lift the vehicle in the air, which could cause room for, you know, safety concerns, compliancy issues. Um, so I, I, I do believe that removing those bay doors in the rear is not the solution to this. Uh, I truly do believe that if this is, for whatever reason, declined today, uh, the next course of action that Firestone would take would getting timers on the doors to close automatically uh, within a certain time frame. I believe we agree to a five minute window, which could be shortened to heck a, a 45 second window. I mean, the car can pull out of that pretty quick and that can close pretty automatically, which I think would be the next step that we would take. Um, but to suggest that we can remove the noise to zero uh, based on just the natural course of operations, even with the front doors being open, uh, I do believe you're gonna get a little bit of sound in the back of that building. Um, also, there is another, you know, not necessarily next to our building, but a stone throw or baseball throw away from our, from our shop. There is the Monroe store uh, that is a couple of, I don't know, football field away, maybe less, um, that also impacts. Um, yeah. Yep, but that also, that also could impact the noise as well, um, although not necessarily as close to the residents as us, but still contributes to mechanical noise. So I, to answer your question, mm -hmm. I don't believe removing the doors in the rear is the solution. I think timers right. would be that next step that we would take. Right, and I'm not suggesting that, that your decibel level be zero. We, we understand you're a business, mm -hmm. right? Um, however, I mean, we gotta, you also need to be um, aware that what may be considered normal sound mm -hmm. to a mechanic can be excruciating to yep. a resident, right? And that, that's what it comes down to is, is um, working in good faith with your neighbors, right? And that, that's, what, that's why we're all here, right? Yeah. yeah. So I know last time you were here, I, could, I remember saying it, I, I personally recommended that you look at overhead doors with timers. Yep. Um, 
I, I think no matter what, depending on what we talk about today, that you do that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and, and I would make that time as as small as possible. Forty five, it's okay. I, I'd like to be even less. Yeah. Right. So as keep those doors as closed as possible for for their sake, because um, they have the right. They they have patios. They have pools. If they can't be out there and enjoy their property, what's the point of living there? Right. So be courteous of your neighbors, regardless yeah. of what we talk about. Yeah. And, and to, to echo that point, I mean, the last thing we want to do is impact people's lives. Right. You come home from work. You go home. You want to relax. You want to open your old patio doors. You want to go swim in your pool. You want to do all those things that these fine people behind me want to do. Um, the fact that we're impacting it obviously is a problem. It's an absolute problem, and we're do anything in our power to address it. Removing those back doors is, is not the solution. It's not the solution at all. All right. Yeah, a, f a few uh, comments. Um, maybe maybe others may recall this, but I last time you were here for a compliance hearing, I, I seem to remember that you said the your mechanics would not be driving around the neighborhood testing the cars. Correct. But yeah, I'm, testimony I'm bit, today uh, is, 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 is different. Correct. Um, and to speak to Council Witham's point, it seemed like our co-compliance officer was uh, noticing this. I've called it into the co-compliance officer. I know David has also. Uh, I would just encourage, not that I want all the neighbors to become co-compliance officers for the city, but, but if... Every now and then, if you could call into the code compliance office, identify yourself and what the issue is so we can track this, because there's nothing we can do other than revoke the site plan itself and impose the condition. Under, you'd have to reapply for a modification of your site plan if we revoked it or a new site plan, and it would require you to put those timers in. So uh, I would encourage uh, the residents to, to call every now and then when you see those issues. I'll also be talking to my police department about, you know, a directed patrol going in there from time to time uh, to try to, you know, make sure that the mechanics are, are, are not speeding and are compliant with the directional uh, in regards to that small neighborhood. So um, there's no penalty we can impose other than revoking the site plan, and we're going to need some documentation uh, to substantiate that type of uh, legal move. So uh, that's what I would suggest as we move forward. Yep, and to speak on that modified test drive map, uh, the direction that we've given the staff, which I have personally witnessed, is to drive right out of onto, I believe that is uh, High Street, uh, into the uh, Walmart parking lot, which gives us enough time to identify potential issues. It's just one for Any sort of irregular driving would happen safely in a potentially empty parking lot down towards the end of the Walmart, kind of behind them in a row, if you will, um, to take it A, away from the residents, uh, and B, keeping our employees safe, not doing that on a very busy road as High Street is. Just as a follow-up, uh, I would agree with the residents. Monroe Muffler has been there. I've been here over 20 years, mm -hmm. and I've never had a complaint about Monroe Mufflers creating noise to uh, any of the neighborhoods. So I would concur with, with their, you know, their uh, Comments on that regard. Uh, Mr. Goodwin, then Mr. Richardson, then Mr. Abitis. Mr. Goodwin. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not in favor of, of uh, appealing uh, this. And I would go a step further in saying that I think what I'm hearing based on the lived experience of these abutters is that not only was you know, maybe we were a bit shy when this was originally approved uh, and how to mitigate noise, but I, I'm gonna go a step further and say, I think our zoning shouldn't allow these type uses this close to residential anymore. This is not the first, this is not the first noise complaint we've gotten as, as noted. Um, you know, we wanna be business friendly. We want a diversified tax base to take burden off of our residents but not at the expense of the residents' day-to-day -day lived lives. And uh, you know, just observationally, uh, a high street filled with car repair and auto washes is not uh, the most uh, ag agreeable place. Obviously, we need those services, but I think the town has uh, more than enough of them already and would be um, in favor of updating our zoning to limit future development in this context. Um, 
one question I have is that I did notice on Middle Street, I believe, which is a little segment near Rural Street, there is on the street on Google Street View, there's some like Abervitae plants planted along the fence line. Do you, are those do you know if those are still in place? Uh I don't know exactly what you're referring to in terms of the plant name. We yep. do have Northeast Landscape that now controlling our landscaping. Okay. It's been in effect uh, as of late or early, or excuse me, early June or late May. Um, so they control all of our landscaping at this point. They These have, are like little like evergreen pine tree looking things. They're there. And are they, uh, I maybe say, the community uh, <laughs> knows, I, so are, they, are they taller than the fence now or are they still fence height? Okay. Back, are you talking in regards to the back of the building where the fence, the yeah, final you, fence you, is? The site right, plan, right. you have a parking lot, a fence, and then behind the fence, your property line, is there's not much space. So I think there's a planting strip there that's controlled by the city. Does anyone know? Uh, we may, I believe we maintain that okay. uh, just out of courtesy. Yes. Uh, can I just speak to this, Mr. Chairman? So there, there was... Um, they were out of compliance for their own landscaping. So Shane actually sent them a notice of violation on that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, they did replant some of their landscaping uh, during the summer. That, that's what the abutters were referring to. Uh, I have not gone out and checked along the fence, but. Okay, I'm just, what I'm getting at here is that there is a strip of land behind your fence that may be an opportunity to with the correct planting, get a slightly taller evergreen plant there that's taller than your fence that will help shield some of the light and sound going into the neighborhood. And that should be a pretty low cost way to help mitigate some of these concerns. Um, obviously, monitoring the doors is the key issue here, but um, anything you can do to sort of help yourself out, yeah, I think that absolutely. would be something to look into. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that that would be absolutely an option we would definitely explore. We have a landscaping company that can get that done pretty easily. I would say the only, I guess, delay on that would probably be the spring. Cold yeah, it's not going to happen yes. uh, until spring. But um, but anyways, just a note on, on that. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not in favor of your motion. Mr. Richardson and Mr. Obias. Mr. Orton, after that. Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just down the road in, in Dover, where the oil change business is, I've, I've been there several times. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I've been there several times. But Right, exactly. Thank you. Um, when you're waiting outside, the doors open, you go in. I don't know if it's on a timer or if it's a thoughtful employee. You go in, they close. Mm -hmm. When the doors open in the front, you drive out, they close before you even take the right. They're coming down. Mm -hmm. And again, whether they're on timers or not, I don't know. But there's some thought there and to be responsible mm -hmm. for their neighbors. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you can't do the same thing. When you were here before, you said you put up the signs. You said you've had training and the, all the employees have been made aware. And maybe it is a turnover in staff that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's some kind of a floor manager. And if the floor manager is not taking care of that, that person should be fired. And maybe then the message will get through. Maybe employ the onus is not just on us or the neighbors. The onus is on you to make it work. So you have to make your, resp your employees responsible. And if that means getting rid of them and placing with someone who gets the message, you do that. And you make people responsible for their job. And if they're not, then I'm sorry, they got to go. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that it's you because I know you've been here third third time now and you don't want to be here. But you're not there every day either. Yep. So somebody has to be made responsible. And in, anyway, yep. the, other thing, the other thing I want to touch on is that the last time you were here, you told us that the problem of driving through the neighborhood had been resolved. Yep. Obviously, that's not the case. Yep. That's got to happen. And again, that's on somebody's responsibility that's there every day. Mm -hmm. So take the initiative to deal with your employees. That's my suggestion. Yeah. And if I could just speak to that quickly, I'm not sure if I have the opportunity to do so or not, but I, I would say um, the reason that we called this hearing for, were for a number of different reasons. Clearly, the residents are bringing up 
um, issues that have not been escalated to be prior, um, which I want to make sure that the board is, understands. Um, this is the first time that I'm hearing that the test drive route has not been adjusted. Um, this is the first time that I'm hearing uh, about potential, uh, you know, doors being open longer than they should be outside of what I can see and what you have reported to me. Up until this point, there was one formal uh, complaint, if you would call it that, made to the city. Um, and I know, I believe uh, a member of the board said that, hey, maybe they're just exhausted. Maybe they just don't want to complain, but I would suggest, and it was actually due to the recommendation of this board that I file this, you know, this uh, amendment uh, to remove this condition. Um, so to your point, sir, um, all these issues will be addressed. They will be addressed very firmly. They will be, be addressed very, um, very honestly, and they'll be, they'll be, uh, they'll be addressed immediately uh, to make sure that these residents behind me feel safe where they live and are comfortable where they live and uh, respect, uh, we will respect them for sure. Mr. Robertson, and Mr. Horton, then I'll weigh in here and move for a motion. Well, I, get, I guess that's sort of what I was going to um, do is I think um, the area manager gets it. Um, it's not our job to tell him what he should do or shouldn't do. I'll offer one thing. I go to Portsmouth Ford. You pull up to the door. The door opens. It's on a sensor. As soon as the truck's in, the door shuts. I'm not going to tell you whether you should do uh, what you should or should not do. Um, just for the sake of discussion, I'm going to make a motion to request that they request to alter the condition of approval um, on keeping doors shut be denied. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? One point of discussion that I'll add on here. Um, there's been some talk about Summersworth and the planning board being business friendly, and I think our record supports that. I would amend that, that we should be friendly to businesses that are friendly to the city and the city's residents. Over the course of the time since your organization, when I speak of you here, I'm speaking of Bridgestone, Firestone, not you personally. Of course, absolutely. And I want to make that clear because this could be taken poorly if so. There were conditions placed on the original approval to try to reduce the impact to the neighborhood. Those have not been followed. You've been up in front of us for two compliance hearings. You're here again. It's clear to me that your organization is not abiding by the conditions that have been placed on them, that there have been safety concerns called in. And as one member of the board, as well as a resident of this city, I would like to request that the city begin gathering the legal paperwork required to revoke this. It's clear that the business has not been friendly to the city the city's residents and I would say that with that request if it's followed the onus is on Firestone that there's nothing found to revoke it I hope that's clear in my position and I hope that the board would agree with me if you ever come up in front of us again any other discussion on the motion all, right. all those in favor of the motion to deny the request to alter the conditions of approval any opposed Thank you. 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 Uh, Director Mayor, is any new business to come before the board? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item of business number five, workshop business. Uh, excuse me. Yep. Folks, could we continue the discussion outside so we can close up? May I ask? I suppose, yes. <laughs> So um, only a small portion of the neighborhood first got notice when they were intending to build and Direct with these, yes. if the entire, because it's a small neighborhood, it's a dead end. If we could somehow make sure that the whole neighborhood gets, because it, it, word of mouth is, is what got us together tonight. We, like only like five people got letters. Yeah, so I'm not sure of how the direct abutter rules work precisely, but I know that only, that only a certain radius is okay. notified. Mm -hmm. um, We'll take it under sure consideration. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll sure. take it under consideration. Okay. Just roll in order. We take it under consideration. All right, thanks. thanks, all. And if we could continue the discussion outside, please. Uh, folks, can we please clear the chambers? Our meeting is still going. Thanks, all. <laughs>
I'd make a motion that we do uh, defer the workshop business to the next meeting. I'll motion by Mr. Belmore. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, motion to adjourn in order. Uh, any communications miscellaneous first? I'm just hoping you can review the subdivision updates for January. For, for January. Bring comments. Just. Yeah, under communications, I, I know that I've been following the construction of the new car wash on High Street. Um, I did flag the trench uh, that was dug into High Street for either water, sewer, or both uh, with public works. Uh, it was not done particularly well. Uh, since then, the developer has repaved the trench. Uh, it is as bad, if not worse now. So we're not moving in the right direction. And I would hope that city staff somehow gets that corrected uh, before issuance of a CO. The difficulty is, I don't know how you pave adequately this time of year, and I don't know when they're going to seek their CO. So it's a bit of a, a compromise. Know. The other thing with that project, uh, I, I think it changed hands after we approved it. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage city staff to look very closely at uh, the plan set that we approved and the conditions of approval because somehow what's there is not what I envisioned, quite frankly. So uh, I think it just needs a very close, watchful eye on it. So thank you. Yeah, I have one more thing, and I'll, then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Same thing on the project that's happening on 108 behind the ambulance operation. Part of that stipulation was they've got to widen the end of that road. They've just did that today. There's no way they're going to pave that. So there's probably a five or a six foot wide swale on each end of that road that's going to be mud. Um, again, I don't know how they pave that, but before a condition of approval gets granted, that's got to be completed. They have a couple of items that need to be addressed over there. Okay. Thank you. Um, move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Bytus. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. All those in favor? Sure. All right. Meeting is adjourned at 8.43.